Hello and welcome to Kickstart 2024 in Amsterdam. Joining me now is Olivier Micheli, President and CEO of Theatre 4 Group. And uh, Olivier, it's a pleasure seeing you and speaking to you uh, in a very sunny Amsterdam for February. <laughs> Thank you for the invitation and you're right, it's a beautiful day. Very happy to be there today. Uh, so we are kind of halfway through today and there's been a lot of discussions about uh, emerging markets within the European marketplace. What would you say are the biggest trends for data center development in Europe? Uh, between now and uh, let's go up to 2025 because I mean things are going to change so fast and grow so fast in the next 12 months. And I will I will come back on the main trend and I will talk mm. about AI because everybody is talking about <laughs> AI. The buzzword. But but let's say, let let me come back on some of the numbers that have been announced mm. and now that are mainstream in the industry uh, that will give us some idea about what is coming. Mm. If you look at the 2023 numbers in terms of take up, I mean it's amazing. Uh, roughly the sector has booked around 6 gig across the globe but around 75 percent is coming from the US mm. okay mm. and a little bit less than 1 gig has been booked in Europe which is massive but in the US it was a lot AI driven projects mm. where in Europe the 800 meg out of the 6 gig globally were pretty much hmm. all cloud-based projects. There's still a bit of a, an AI lag in Europe right now. Yeah. Exactly. Would you say three, five years? No, 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 less, less, less. than okay. that, I can tell you. Hmm. And that's why I th it's coming. Yeah. It's coming as we speak because AI is growing like mad. If you look at the GPU market moving from 10 billion to around hmm. 100 billion euros, dollars market hmm. by 26, 27, and the fact that inferencing AI is coming and needs mm. to be as near as possible from the consumers. So in Paris, in Madrid, Milan and so on. Mm -hmm. I can tell you the AI wave is coming in Europe and already mm. we are working on very large deal around AI. So the mm. main trend, it's still cloud, mm. but the, the wave which is coming uh, and if you combine both, mm. for sure in 24 will be above one gigawatt mm -hmm. and 25, 26 will be it's more cold. around the two yeah. gig. So we need to get ready to absorb mm. these wave of demand. Mm. So as you absorb the wave of demands, as you sign the big AI deal, I'm sure you're not going to tell me who it is. Sorry. Um, have mm -hmm. you had to kind of go back to the drawing boards to redesign the facilities? Because uh, we, we've heard that a lot. So last year I went to a conference in, in Canada and that was what everyone was doing. Uh, we've seen Meta publicly saying we are stopping some projects to redesign them, not stop construction, just to go and think through um, the new architecture of the data center. Uh, and there's been quite a lot of operators that have done the same. Has Data4 kind of gone through the same process over the last few months to, to adapt the, the, the architecture of the building to, to the AI world? Completely. So, so, so you're right, but we need to be pragmatic here, mm -hmm. okay? And there is a question of time to market because, of course, we have a team and my CTO, Marie, uh, basically is working ba to, to, it's not redesign, but to design the data center of today and tomorrow to, to host the AI workloads, which are much more dense. Just if I open uh, just mm. a note on this one, if you look the last chipset from NVDA, it's basically the GH200. Mm. Uh, it, we're talking about racks of 70 to 80 kilowatt per racks. So it's a different world. So yes, we have a design team working on that. However, the time to market is very important because the big hyperscalers and the new AI players, the GPU as a service players like CoreWeave, Lambda, mm. Denver and so on, basically those guys, they need to deliver the AI um, projects, uh, architecture now. Mm -hmm. And so what they're doing is they're using the, I would say, standard design for cloud solutions. We are bringing some direct liquid cooling inside the data center mm. and it fits for today, but for tomorrow, yeah. I can tell you that with 70 to 80 kilowatt per racks, it's a completely different design. Uh, in, uh, in North America, they're already talking about 200 to 300, sometimes 400 in their dreams as well, but 200 to 300 kilowatts per rack, which is completely out of this world. Um, and that's not gonna take long to come. It's before the end of this decade. Um, okay, by the end of this, I don't know. It's, uh, I mean, we are a few quarters away from a lot of these changes. Uh, but people think we have a lot of time, so I think the but time to market to is very important. S sorry to interrupt yeah. you, but I think you're right. But we need to work on this design now, now to be ready yeah. in the next mm. three, four, five years. Oh, yeah. I don't know if people don't do it until next year, maximum next year, there's probably like the really cut off date. Um, they're going to miss, they're going to miss out. Um, you have to come out with something completely new. 
uh, rather than go and redesign. It has to be completely different businesses. But I was going to ask, because you were talking about the time to market, and of course that's very important, but Europe has a few challenges, and power being probably one of the biggest ones uh, that we can throw in regulations and all those sort of things. In your opinion, what are the biggest challenges for European data center development? Uh, and then how is Data4 kind of navigating that? Well, it's a very good point. If I, if I come back, to be honest, from my perspective, I see a big change back three years ago in 2021, where mm. actually our sector has completely changed. Mm. Previously, we have, of course, some challenges around sustainability uh, and, and, and very few things. Actually, the barriers to entry mm -hmm. were quite low, except yeah. the capital you need to invest. Mm. But since 21, the, the world of the data center has completely changed. We have so much challenges of acceptability. We we're talking about this this morning. Uh, inflation, okay, the cost of capital with the interest rate raising, sustainability, and so on. To answer your question, for me in Europe, scarcity of resources mm. is the number one problem. And it's about land mm. and power. Uh, regulation. And acceptability is a big problem and mm. we need to work on that and that's basically the message we pushed this morning we need to hear the, the you know the signals from the market mm -hmm. where actually people get you know uh, not annoyed but have some ideas about the wrong perception of the data center so it's the sector to explain what is a data center mm. what is the role of the data center mm. and that without the data center there is no digital mm. but let's not take that for granted and it's very important we take all our energy to explain that to the citizen, to the mayor, to the elected people, to the ministers, to the government, because otherwise, and I know that in Europe we need to be careful, they will decide for us. And it should Brussels be loves doing that. <laughs> and governments as well. Hmm. You know, sometimes Brussels gives a directive, and you know what? The local, they follow. national go even further hmm. and hmm. higher than hmm. what is given hmm. by the European Commission. So, hmm. so that's why I think Let's be very careful about uh, being proactive and working with the administration, government and the European Commission, you're right, mm. to basically work together mm. uh, in order not to be stopped in our development. Mm. Cool. And then how is Data4 kind of going, going to navigate all that? How do you stay ahead of the curve um, so you're not impacted by a lot of this? Uh, you're right. Alors, first of all, we are very proud to be a true 100% mm. European player. Mm -hmm. And where we differentiate with a lot of our competitors is we are truly local. So Data4 is not, I would say, a French company. I call it a European company with an HQ in Paris, mm -hmm. Drew. However, we are Italian, we're Spanish, we are from Poland. And basically, we have some very strong teams and leaders mm -hmm. in the market to work with the territories okay, and to develop mm -hmm. our business. Because data center, it's a real tangible asset. At the end of the day, it needs mm -hmm. to sit in a municipality, you need to have authorization. And so that's why it's super important to work locally with uh, the local mm. stakeholders. Mm. Mm. Okay. And that's where I think we are different from a lot of our competitors. Mm. Mm. Yeah, there's a, a different culture, business culture to each location yes. um, that a, a company goes into. Um, and that's something that we, we've heard from your colleague, Adam, um, about this before, about the culture that data for cultivates. Uh, within the group and the, the, the value of the languages that are spoken uh, within the corridors. So that, that's always plays in favor of building out the footprint. Uh, which speaking of it, you've got a lot of money going in for you um, to build all this footprint. I mean, you raised, uh, you secured a deficit of 2.2 billion euros, which is extendable to 3.2 billion. Uh, of course, you had the recent acquisition by Brookfield, one of the biggest deals uh, of last year. I mean, talk, how are you going to spend all these billions? Like, wh wh what's the plan? Well, it's <laughs> If you look at our business plan for the end of the decade until 2029, uh, well, actually, this big, you know, senior debt facility of extendable to 3.2, which is quite a big yeah. quantum. Yeah, uh, it's easy to spend. I mean, well, it's yeah. going to be spent by 2025, which mm. is tomorrow. So we are already working on new source of funding mm. to continue the expansion of, um, of Data4. And just How to illustrate- How much are you going to be looking at? Is it more or less than this? Can you give us a number? In terms of, sorry. In uh, terms to, of to raise capital, what capital are you going to look for to, to build? Well, basically, so we're looking at different kind of, either we're going to continue to raise more senior debt facility, mm. Uh, either we're going to work on kind of capital recycling, either uh, we're looking at as well the, uh, uh, you know, the ABS uh, issuance mm -hmm. that is very popular in the US 
a little bit less in Europe because we have different jurisdictions, but we are thinking about that. Of course, we are, you know, uh, working mm. with uh, Brookfield with mm. in terms of equity. But but what is more than the sources? Uh, the sources are very important. But mm. then when you look at the users, you know, last year when we did our business plan for the end of the decade, we were talking about five billion mm. euros investment. One year after today, we have refreshed mm. our business plan, and it has increased already by fifty percent no in terms of you know new developments because. We have big ambitions in Europe, mm. you know, in our existing markets, mm -hmm. and we need um, a lot of capital uh, for doing that. So it will be about 7.5 billion at this stage, kind of going in You're very good. Um, and then... Very good man. It will cross the 10 billion quickly, <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> it's possible, but now as we <laughs> speak, it's about 1 billion investment yeah. on an annual basis. Yeah. And about three, four years ago, four years ago, we were at 100 million on mm. an annual basis. Yeah. 10 times more. It's ten times it's more, yeah. Which is but the same for you, I <laughs> But it's it's because as well, what is very important is uh, we want mm. we have big ambitions. You know, we cover with mm. our six markets, and we're going to open a new a new market. So yeah. We'll have very soon seven markets, and perhaps we can meet again, and I mm. can give you mm. the mm. Uh, you know the, the tip on this new market. But basically, we're covering seventy percent mm. of the European GDP. And my focus is on these seven markets. Mm, mm. And we want to be the number one on these markets. So all mm. our capital mm. will go to, mm. we fly to these markets, mm. basically. Okay. I was actually going to ask you about tier two markets. What's the, um, very quickly before we finish, what's the, the, the strategy for tier two locations? Uh, and tier two, I mean, places like Madrid, Milan, Warsaw, um, the not, not the flat D markets. Alors, we like the tier two markets. Mm. And actually, we are very proud uh, to have invested the first one in these tier two market, mm -hmm. which are quite big now. Mm -hmm. uh, and basically we want to keep our first mover advantage. Mm -hmm. And as we speak, we, are, we, we just uh, make a new acquisitions in Milan. And as we speak, we're going to invest more and more in Milan, in Warsaw, in Madrid. Mm. Uh, to be basically uh, the number one in these mm. markets. Mm. Interesting. And then, of course, I mean, we are in Amsterdam, one of the largest markets in, uh, in Europe, the second largest in Europe after London, um, for Kickstart 2024. What does a conference like this mean to you, means to data for? Uh, and if we look into the 2025 edition, what do you think is going to be the big topic of conversation next year? Well, I think it's, I, I, will, I will start with your last question. Mm. Uh, you know, there is like a big momentum on AI, but it, as I said at the beginning of this interview, it, it's not there yet in Europe. It's in the US, mm. but not there. I'm sure in one year time, we'll speak about all the deals, the mm. real tangible deals around AI that has mm. fly been booked in 2024. And basically how we address the supply of the coming years to absorb cloud and AI. And, and regarding your first question, I think it's, it's very good. It's a big industry and I think it's very good to have all the industry meeting here in Amsterdam, mm. tomorrow in Cannes and so on and so on, uh, you know, to address the big challenges you were mentioning, you know, mm. acceptability is a big topic, sustainability mm. is a big topic, scarcity of resources, mm. cost of capital, etc, mm. etc. The sector needs to address these issues together mm. uh, because again, it could be it could be constrained for the development mm -hmm. of the sector if we don't address them uh, carefully. Yeah. Especially the acceptability by the people outside this building. Um, exactly. I think that's probably one of the biggest challenges that the industry has, even probably bigger than the power side uh, of things, because that's capital and infrastructure deployment, changing people's minds and perceptions. It's very important. It's, more, it's probably more challenging than actually building infrastructure. Uh, but Olivier Michelis, uh, President and CEO of Data4 Group, thanks so much for talking to me. Um, as for your home, thank you for watching and do check our website and social media for more breaking news from the digital infrastructure sector worldwide. Other tech capital, you lead, we report. Bye for now.